for tuning in. Today I'm working on a tray. Um, I decided that I'm going to do this one as a dirty pour, which I've done a couple of these before. I, there, um, one of them's on my Facebook page. It was a live that I did and it was um, in shades of like teal and silver and I ended up putting a horse on it and it turned out really, really cool. And then I did another one on the Bear Woods Facebook page in a live. And that one I used silver and purple. And that was like an, a big um, agate tray. And that one turned out really cool. And I love how they look. So I decided I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to try some different colors this time. So this wood is kind of washed with like a bluish gray. And the wood is almost like a lighter chestnut color. So it's, it's a little bit of a different finish. So I picked out some colors that I think are going to go good. <laughs> um, so these two I have not used yet. These are both Color Obsession um, pigment pastes. So this one is called Shale Blue. And I think that looks really pretty with that gray, bluish gray wash. And then this one is called Lavender, I can't read that, Lavender Mauve, Lavender Mauve Shimmer. So this one is a cream and this one's a shimmer. So I have those two. And then I'm using Mix All in white. This creates a ton of lacing. And then I'm gonna throw in some of this Super Copper from Pearl X just to add like a splash of metallic to it. So that is what I've got going on here. Um, I've mixed up five ounces. I think that should cover this whole thing. Um, I don't wanna fill it to the top, you know, so five ounces should be good. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna divide this up in the cups here. I think I'm gonna want the most of the blue and probably that lavender mauve. I'm gonna start out with filling these up about the same. So the least amount is gonna be the copper. I'll just add some more in here. And then I'm going to keep my cup handy because I'm going to actually end up pouring all these colors right back into this cup. I'm just going to wipe it off. Set that there for now. And we'll get the colors mixed up. Let's see, make sure you guys can still see what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. All right, so I need some sticks. All right, so the color obsession paste. Just want to give it a good stir. Make sure when you, whenever you use these pigment pastes in the jars, make sure you stir them really well. Scrape all the dry stuff off the bottom and the sides. Get it all mixed back together because these pastes are usually made with powdered pigments and they settle. So if you don't stir them up, and by the time you get to the bottom of your jar, you're gonna end up with just powder. All right, so I'm just gonna take just about that much. And I think, I'm gonna guess I have about an ounce and a half in this cup. Maybe an ounce. These are three ounce cups, but it's kind of misleading. <laughs> it's hard to gauge. Uh, 
And I want all these colors to be opaque. The shimmer, <clears throat> I wouldn't mind if the shimmer is a little transparent, but I want it to be a strong color, a strong transparent. All right, so there we go with the shale blue. My mix all. I'm going to do 10 drops. Okay, that looks pretty good. So it's such an unusual color. It's like, you can see the lavender in it, but it's iridescent. It's got the mauve. It's like this. And then when you turn, turn it in the light, it becomes a little more purple. And then when you turn it one the other way, it becomes a little bit more um, like a grayish gold purple. <laughs> it's hard to describe. These iridescent colors, they have so many colors in them. Okay, so about just a tad less than what I used of the blue. We'll see what it looks like. A lot of times with the shimmer paste, you actually have to use more if you want to get an opaque color. So we'll see. Oh, this has some beautiful iridescence now that it's mixing up. Wow, this is gorgeous. There's definitely like a little bit of a greenish gold undertone to it. Almost reminds me of like a chameleon mica. So it has that kind of uh, way it's reacting to the light. So it's slightly transparent. It's not, it's like super transparent. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more actually. Just to make sure it's not too sheer. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then the mica, which I should have mixed up first. <laughs> so this is, this looks like it's less than an ounce. So I'm just gonna do, I'm a smallish scoop. I don't need, don't need to overdo it with the mica. This is such a beautiful reddish orange copper. It's so vibrant.
Okay, so that's ready to go. All right, so now when you do a dirty pour, you put all the colors into your cup and then you just pour it. So the color that's on the bottom of the cup that you put in this cup first is going to end up on the top when you dump it out. So that's going to be the color that has the most presence in the piece. So for this one, I want this blue to be um, kind of the strongest color. I'm going to put most of it in. Then next I'm going to do purple. And then the copper. Now this white is going to be heavy. Um, this is the same white that I use for when I do my blooms, so it tends to sink. So once you pour it in, you don't want to wait too long, otherwise it will sink to the bottom. And then of course, whatever colors you put in last are the ones that will be poured out first and they will end up more on the bottom of the pour. But resin moves around and these pigments, they all have different weights and densities. So they're going to do kind of their own thing. There's gonna be some lacing and some cells um, different colors are going to rise to the top. Other ones are going to sink. So you get some really, really fun effects with these dirty pores. I don't know if that's probably going to be too much copper. I don't want the copper to take over, but we'll see. You can always let it if I don't like it, I can always let it dry and then pour on top of it again. And then I'm doing the white last. Okay, these out of the way. Wipe my gloves off before I touch this tray. I'm gonna get risen all over it. All right, so now we pour. So I'm just gonna try and mostly pour in the center and then kind of help it spread a little bit. Alright, so I'm going to use the heat gun to thin it out and that'll help it move around. Okay, and I'm just going to tilt.
Okay. So as this um, cures or, you know, as this uh, sits here, <laughs> um, some of the lacing is going to start to appear as the white works its way through. I'm already starting to see some over here that's coming out. I'll just hit it with my uh, torch here. Sometimes that helps with the lacing. See some starting over here. So let me bring you down for a close up. So much glare from my lights. Let me turn my lights off. Okay, hopefully you can see now that there's some cells are starting to pop out over here. Some are starting on this side. So I find I get these beautiful cells um, when I use the Mixol. It's also really good for um, beaches if you're trying to do like the beach wave effects. Mixol is great for that. So I'm going to let this uh, just kind of sit and do its thing. And then I'll be back tomorrow to show you what it looks like when it's all cured. Good morning. This is all cured and wow, <laughs> so much detail in it. All the little cells that came through. It turned out way better than I thought it would. And I really can't capture how the copper that copper mica it's, it's a, there we go you can see is like this really cool glint like this metallic glint when the light hits it just right just adds to the beauty of it but I'm just in love with this so these dirty pores are so fun to do and you never really know what you're going to get, but <laughs> I think it's worth trying. So, so if you enjoyed this video and had some fun with me, please subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and share my content and I will see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.